Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. There has been some tragic uh, local uh, news uh, on the on the weekend, where in uh, Sydney's uh, west, an alleged uh, a, a drunk driver, uh, Samuel William Davison, uh, 20, 29, who was allegedly three times the legal blood alcohol limit, uh, uh, his uh, ute hit and and killed uh, four uh, children. Uh, of a, a local uh, Lebanese uh, Maronite uh, Christian uh, family and it's yeah it's just broken everyone's heart that uh, because the the children uh, were 13 uh, 12 uh, and and nine and uh, a person who was uh, who was quite uh, indirectly close to the family is uh, our uh, resident uh, local uh, Sydney uh, Lebanese uh, conservative, uh, Joel Jamal, who uh, is kind enough to, to join us uh, right now. I'll just give him a call. Uh, this is, you'll hear the annoying uh, Skype, the uh, ringtone as well. So just bear with while I bring Joel up. Hello, Joel. Yeah, not at all. Jim, how you doing? Uh, good. Can you just flip your uh, uh, f uh, phone horizontally? Sure. How's that? Yeah, uh, that's good. Are uh, you? You're just out on the street. I am. I am. Yeah. I'm actually. I'm actually just going to the vigil. Oh, right okay. They're, 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 they're just wrapping up, actually. Because I was going to say, uh, our audience will get a bit uh, dizzy, but if you're on your way uh, there, then that's completely understandable. No worries. Yeah, I'm just about to stop now, actually. Mm. So you guys go ahead, eh? Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just stopping now. The um, There are over a thousand people just gathered out here at this uh, vigil right now. And... Um, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty crazy mm. uh, seeing everyone doing the rosary and saying their prayers and uh, just coming together as a community. And now I gave a, a before you came on, just a brief uh, overview, uh, but um, you can probably give more detail about the family. From what I understand, it was a, a large blended uh, family. Uh, blended? Bl a blended that in, in terms that it was a mother and a stepfather. Yeah, look, that was one of the, the so as, as everyone knows, there were uh, sadly four young children that passed away, three of them from the same family. Uh, one of them was a, uh, was from a different family and um, yeah, she had a, yeah, step parents and um, I, 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 on, uh, on the night, two nights ago, Saturday night, I did have the unfortunate pleasure of sort of bringing them water and, um, tissues and all that but that was to the mother and the stepfather and um yeah and then uh the step the when the when the when the real biological father did turn up he was hysterical to say the least he was absolutely devastated he was absolutely devastated but um yeah no it, it's definitely rocked the community i mean if i were to flip my camera and if the quality was a bit better You'd see even now, an hour after the event, just people still just waiting there, saying their prayers, mm. uh, saying the rosary, and uh, yeah, just showing some respect. Mm. The mother, uh, Jiga, is that how you say it? I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> but yeah, she's been incredibly strong and also um i would say merciful and and forgiving because uh like obviously uh obviously the uh the drunk driver uh obviously we have to put alleged in there's been a lot of online comments saying hang him death penalty she's she said um i'm not going to hate him because that's not mm. who we are and mm. 
I mentioned that um, yeah, she's a member of the local Maronite Christian Lebanese community, which uh, for those for those of you who might be might uh, might not understand, that's basically the Lebanese Catholic Church. Yes, to put it uh, simply. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's pretty. I would say most extremely Christian attitude that you can have, and obviously she's well. That that's how she, obviously she's focusing on just grieving for her three children and like losing like because this is the thing about like losing like children that young like you know you raise them like they're your life growing up and it's the same for like brother brothers and sisters is mm. like grow up with them and then like all of a sudden they're not there and like mm. it's it's just they've been your life so so long and like then then they're, then they're gone they're just like all the all the future that you saw there it's all gone yeah it's it's heartbreaking stuff and um I mean, uh, this is a, a lot of people wonder why I don't, why why I'm censored with my language often. It's for exact situations like this, you know. Uh, don't freaking drink and drive. Hmm. It's as simple as that. And uh, if you don't know how to calculate what it is to stay under the limit, just play it safe. Don't have a drink, or ca call an Uber, pick up the car tomorrow. You know, it's um, it's not worth it. Hmm. You know. I, I, I am glad that this has really come to the attention of the public and this is really sort of everyone is in agreement, you know, something must be done and, mm. you know, we need to be more careful with how we handle this. But um, the fact of the matter is, you know, let's not make any decisions on public policy while in the heat of the moment. This is a time for healing mm. and a time to reflect on the sanctity of life and how precious all life is and how we need to respect the fact that we're um, only on this earth for a very short time and we need to make the most of each day. Certainly, I, I would say our mortality has been on display as humans all throughout this year. Obviously, there was the, the, the bushfires which ravaged your home state, New South Wales, mm. uh, 34 deaths at, at last count, a lot of those uh, emergency services, firefighters, including those who'd come over from America, then we've got the coronavirus, and then obviously in our sort of political circle, the uh, suicide of, of Wilson Gavin. I'm not sure if you'd ever spoken with him or, or met him, but that sort of brought, ho brought home to a lot of us that how toxic politics is and sort of like there, there just seems to be all these reminders just how precious life is and that mm. how we're just too consumed in the political bubble all the time to basically take stock no you're absolutely right tim and um it's important to remember that uh politics is not meant to be this thing that you worship and um, I mean, one thing I've been reflecting on these last few days is the importance, just as it once was, the importance of community. I mean, what you're seeing right now from the the Maronite community, my community, is that what this is what Australia used to be like. We used to congregate around churches. We used to come together. This used to be our social safety net, both economically and in times of crisis like this. And this is what it practically looks like. Um, and if I was to make a side note, uh, this this might this might antagonise some people, but I believe that if this was three people from perhaps an Anglo background, I don't think it would have gotten as much traction for whatever reason. I do believe that most of that is because the Lebanese community is very connected. It's a very small world, and that is what uh, white Australia has actually lost, and it's unfortunate because that's how we. That's, that's just mateship. That's how we sort of take care of each other and raise a good society and lovely kids. Yeah, I'd agree with you uh, with that. And it's I've, it's been on display, I think, the, the last couple of years, just how, and 
Oh, sorry, there's a bit of noise coming in there. That sorry, I'll mute. But that the 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 Australian Lebanese community in Sydney, and should emphasise both Christian and and Muslim, they. As you said, they uh, they are acting as a community like white Australians used to do. We've become uh, so detached from neighbours, uh, communities, and I think that's why there there has been this massive focus because uh, uh, on this. You're so uh, it's pleasing that the media has picked this up. The 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 fact that. There has been this community, the community has responded in the best way possible, and I think that's why the, the media is, is running with it, basically, because this, this is how you know, we should cope with, with tragedy. And as I mentioned before, the toxicity of the, of, of the bushfires. Uh, during the summer, there was just no account for. It took a while for the political rage to to basically subside and people to start opening their their hearts and their wallets to donate. Uh, Joel, you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right, Tim. And I think that's that's the best message we can all sort of take mm. from this. Sorry, I know you can't probably see much of that, but um. I'm no, a, a few hundred people. Yeah, can't, just uh, yeah. In front, as just sort of lights um, there, but oh yeah, you can see. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just want to go back to your point about not uh, jumping to make uh, public policy in the in, in the light of this tragedy, because let's not forget that's what uh, the New South Wales government did after the one punch kill of Thomas Kelly, basically shut down the the Sydney nightlife and now those uh lockout laws have been slowly repealed because it crippled the economy and it didn't really help the the kelly family a, a at all in the end i don't want to go because that's a whole other uh touchy topic as well but some people have been saying that uh, we if you have any drop of alcohol in your blood when you're driving that that should be illegal, but that would th that would be an even that would create more problems than it would solve. I mean, let's not remember this guy was three times the legal limit. Allegedly, you probably need more harsher penalties for uh, drink driving, and also he's been charged with manslaughter, not uh, dangerous driving causing death or culpable driving. No, you're absolutely right, too, man. You know what? I was thinking the exact same thing on the. Um Thomas Kelly thing. In fact, when I say don't make public policy based on emotions like like it is now, that is exactly the, the, the example I'm referring to. Thomas Kelly was the brother of a friend from school, Stuart Kelly, who later killed himself. Now, when Thomas Kelly passed away, it was at a very convenient time for a lot of property developers in the area, and it allowed them to actually shut down uh, the nightlife and uh, due to the with the lockout laws and that made it a lot easier for them to actually get approval from council I know politics and I know I'm property because that and I know property because that's how that's where I work and That's something that I'm very weary of and that's why I say now is not the time to for elegant discussions on public policy now is the time for grieving before they hijack all of this energy from this community, my community, to use it for to make money, essentially. Like, who knows? Who knows what's coming around the corner? I, an example I used in a post today was maybe they're going to use this to justify what uh, one of what, what one of the Australian politicians just signed internationally, being the um, the thirty kilometres an hour in suburban. Yeah, areas. I've heard about that as well. Which is, I mean, this had nothing to do with uh, speeding in a, a suburban area area that's right he was doing what he was doing about 110 yeah I mean, because... he was already he was already breaking the law mm. and speeding so a law won't fix that and he was also drinking which mm. was oh, three times over the limit allegedly um and so how's that going to fix it 
because I've uh, lived and worked all across uh, Victoria and I've noticed in the, the areas where I've lived and worked, the speed limit slowly reduce. Main Street was once 60, then it's 40. The, uh, the, the, the back uh, road, it used to be 90, now it's 80. You, you see them dropping and dropping and it seems that local councils and governments are just uh, all too uh, happy to oblige in reducing them lower and lower. And the thing is that when you're forced to go slow, that can actually lead to road rage because not everyone thinks that that, sh that speed limit is reasonable. And so it can actually have a worse effect on that. And 30 kilometers, then that's lower than school zones. I mean, 40 kilometers, you can understand uh, during 8 a.m. to, to 9.30 a.m. and uh, 2.30 to 4 o'clock, uh, that obviously there's a lollipop ladies or, or, or man, I should say, or lollipop person, uh, that yeah, you, you need to slow down around there because there's a lot of children around and they have poor motor skills. But 40 has been working well, lowering it to 30. I mean, that's just a an idea from a bureaucrat or, of course, a, a public health advocate who, of course, love to restrict our behaviour. No, you're absolutely right, Tim. And the problem with this is the... Um, a lot of these... And this this goes to the... I don't want to... You know, this is not a time to score cheap political points. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. So this is not a time to score cheap political points, but this just goes to the same concept that a lot of Greens policies, a lot of leftist policies, and, and conservative policies, they're, they're made in the heat of the moment uh, based on emotion, and it's not the time to do that. It's not time to do something that feels good. It's about thinking through, having a quality debate, not shutting down discussion exploring the consequences either way rather either right or wrong and um and then going forward as a, as a community mm. and a democracy respectfully well that's why i wanted to have you on tonight because uh, i knew you were uh, close with the the family albeit uh, indirectly and the, uh, as with uh, as we we're saying before before about uh, tragedies being exploited there's always no end of people wanting to get outraged on someone else's behalf and so i thought it'd be good for you and our audience to uh, uh to tell us like what's the actual feeling in the community what what do they want in this time of of grief and obviously healing well this is one of the rare occasions where we can follow the lead of the prime people that were sort of at the center of this, the parents, mm. of course, other than the kids, but the parents. And I think they've set a perfect example. Mm. They had the father who said, now's the time to mourn. Now's the time to sort of recognize the lives that these kids lived. He said he's numb to what happened, incredibly sad to what happened. But, um, you know, he loves his kids very much and he knows they'll be in a good place. And he doesn't feel, you know, he, 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 he in a way, forgives the uh the perpetrator and similarly with the wife which i was even more impressed by because i i saw her grieving that night she was absolutely distraught and she she said exactly basically the exact same thing you know um she recognizes that he did something wrong she she's not ready to see him yet but she's um you know willing to let the, the law must be just and true and fair and it must be done right. We can't act vindic vindictively because it's not going to bring the kids back ultimately. Mm. And, um, you know, if you were there last night, Tim, when I, when I just, I was meant to be going to a party last night, a 22nd party, and I saw the events fold, unfolding. And, um, you know, when I arrived, it was just before most of the family got there. So I unfortunately got to see all of the reactions from the family as they came in. And, um, yeah, look, the, 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 uh, the, the atmosphere, and you can easily see how this becomes the madness of crowds in a way, the atmosphere was palpably homicidal. And what, what could end up happening was, you know, if, look, if the guy was still out there, if he was in the street, they, believe me, unless the police used their guns, they would not have stopped the, the mob from, um, from pulling him apart basically but i'm really glad that the parents have sort of taken the lead on this have they've found the strength to 
confront a camera and um, to actually say, no, this is about forgiveness, appreciation for the ones we still have, um, forgiveness and the law being just. And uh, and for the record, the, the police officers last night, I mean, this, they said that this is one of the most harrowing times they'd ever seen. But um, no, look, the police officers were very respectful last night, uh, on Saturday night rather, and they were very... Um, uh, they were very good at what they did to the best of their ability considering the situation. And I have a lot of respect for them and how they handled it very um, caringly, but uh, firmly as they should. Well, we, we should uh, uh, give a, a, a thanks to, to them as well because uh, they have helped, from what you just said, uh, keep the community uh, together. I'll let you go now, uh, Joel. As you know, I'm not uh, religious myself, but I certainly think our modern world would benefit uh, a lot more from, as we've seen on display, the, the Christian virtue of uh, forgiveness and just uh, basically just not letting ourselves be consumed by hate absolutely no absolutely and i think yeah we all need a dose of that gratitude and forgiveness and often forgetting as well but uh that's another thing well take care joel and and thanks for joining me thanks for your time tim cheers mm -hmm. As you can see, it got a bit emotional there because, yeah, there's nothing. What obviously, anyone who who dies uh, before it's considered their their time. I mean, a lot of the world was grieving last week for Kobe Bryant. He was 41, and his young daughter was 13. The the fact that, or well, the daughter was she was she was young, but Kobe Bryant he had still many years of. Uh, public service to to give and so when a young death is so unexpected somebody's got many more years to live it it's just it's just such a tragedy that they won't get to to live the rest of their lives we won't get to uh experience uh, them and and that was really nice of joel to to, to give that uh, uh report thanks for tuning in to wilms front Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.